This isn't the time to sound all hopeful and stuff. This is the time to sound the alarm regarding this offensive line. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. Had to think about it that time. (laughs) I would ask you kindly to check out my Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates where you find this. Yeah, I'm in a football mindset. I'm headed over to the Steelers practice today, which is on the south side. Training camp in Latrobe is over. Everything is now back to being behind the building, but also behind closed doors in both the literal and the figurative sense. Yes, reporters are allowed to watch, but no, because of the agreement that's struck, and it's one that's very common in the NFL You're not allowed to report on this or that, all kinds of little rules, because they're trying to keep secrets, because that's the nature of the sport. If people like me just stood back there and described every formation and every play that we saw, that wouldn't be all that helpful to the cause on any given Sunday. So it's going to get a little bit quieter on the news front. You're not going to see spectacular catches by George Pickens or soft touch throws by Kenny Pickett or any of that other fun content that you've become accustomed to, in particular on social media, over the past month or so. And you know what? That's okay. That's okay. Because things need to get real boring real fast in the Steelers' world. As we all saw Saturday night in Jacksonville, This team's got one issue that towers above all the rest, and it's one issue that renders, at least on the offensive side of the ball, pretty much everything else moot. That, of course, is the complete lack of blocking. I could go left to right. You know what? I actually will. Left to right on this line. Dan Moore was awful. The rotating left guard tandem of Kendrick Green and Kevin Dotson were both awful. Mason Cole was okay. James Daniels was awful, maybe awful-er than everyone else. No hype. And Chooks Okorafor was just kind of okay. And together, as a collective unit from the cohesive standpoint, awful, really, really awful. Uh, Like 2021 awful. And that's not okay but in a very different context than why it wasn't okay last year. It wasn't okay last year because Mike Tomlin and Kevin Colbert didn't do anywhere near enough to bolster the roster there, as I'd called out way before the first serious kickoff of the fall. This year, they actually did make some moves and spent a lot of money and aren't getting any results for it right now. And that is just... Wow, I got to tell you, we're wasting our time talking about anything else. It's the perfect time to advance your career and invest in yourself. Point Park University has lowered tuition on many master's degrees. Pay the same low master's price for courses online or on their gorgeous downtown Pittsburgh campus. Whatever works best for you. Choose from more than 30 Point Park master's and doctoral degrees. Save thousands of dollars with Point Park's reduced master's tuition. Visit pointpark.edu slash graduate. I got a couple ideas for solutions. One of them is to, uh, you're not going to like this, but is to at least try some of the other players in certain situations or at least create the illusion that they could be threatening for starting jobs. If I'm running that practice today, as much as I value the reps that I'd be getting for the five projected starters and all that cohesive stuff, I'm not valuing that anywhere near as much as just giving them a swift kick in the rear end. That starts, for me, with Daniels. This is a $26.5 million contract, and this is a fifth-year player in the NFL. There's no cause whatsoever for him to be getting shoved into the backfield on pretty much every snap. His film from the game Saturday night was just disgraceful. 
And I'm not exaggerating here. I'm not looking for drama related to right guards. Believe me, that doesn't sell in this business, okay? He was getting creamed. And it wasn't the way Green and Dotson and Moore, with all those kids over on the left side, were getting beaten. They were getting spun around. They were getting confused. Daniels was just getting blown off. He was just getting sent backward. So the first thing I do is I light the room on fire. And I mean, if I'm Tomlin, I go in there and they get read the riot act before and after their classroom session. And then on top of that, right out on the field. They need to understand what happened Saturday night could be the undoing of everything that they want to do the rest of the way, and that can only begin to change if they start getting a whole lot tougher. Two, or I don't know if that's two, maybe this is three because I threw in so many things there. Whatever it is, two or three. Omar Khan needs to be on the horn, and I mean he needed to be on the horn all weekend. He needed to be on the horn starting at halftime in Jacksonville, finding out who's available. I don't care if it's you know, Eric Fisher, J.C. Treader, whatever it is, you can go through the free agent list, but you can also talk to the other 31 teams. Wow. Oh, okay, 28 of the 31 teams. You got to talk to them. You got to find out what your options are. You do have positional groups in this camp that are bleeding over in terms of quality talent. and That's obviously got the wide receiver group way at the top. Who needs a wide receiver? Maybe even an impact wide receiver, you know? Who needs one? Give me a call. Sincerely, Omar. Oh, by the way, I'll take anybody that you have who can block, like who can even hold a block for like half a second. I know, I know, I know. It's preseason. And the result itself, including the 16 to 15 win, doesn't matter. But this wasn't just like some down thing that happened in an exhibition. This was an extended show of what these guys are right now, with only a couple of weeks left before the first meaningful football against a team that just went to the Super Bowl. And that's, that's abjectly terrifying. I mean, does anyone still even have any interest in the quarterback battle, knowing what might happen to whoever wins the job? When we come back, J1Q. It's time for just one question, and that's brought to you always on this program by the personal injury law firm of Luxembourg, Garvin, Kelly, and George, LGKG. They represent people who are hurt in car accidents, who need assistance with workers' comp and medical malpractice claims. The attorneys at LGKG have been designated super lawyers, capital S, capital L, for the past 15 years. And yes, that is a real thing. The super lawyer designation is reserved for the top 5% of all attorneys in Pennsylvania. Learn more about them at lgkg.com or by calling 888-842-5454. And today's J1Q comes from Danny Blay, who says, ADK, Steelers fans seem to be giddy over Kenny Pickett, as we should be. Are the coaches and players as excited behind closed doors as the fans are? It seems like Tomlin likes to downplay his excitement. Well, Danny, he certainly didn't downplay his excitement in Jacksonville. Now, he wasn't jumping up and down. He wasn't anointing anything. He certainly wasn't about to adjust his depth chart on the spot, as he made clear. But when you're saying things like, that's probably just who he is when a reporter asks about Pickett's composure in critical situations or in uh, short clock situations, that's not commentary that's just casually handed out by an NFL head coach. And yes, to answer your question, there is legitimate excitement among the coaching staff, among the players. There is also 
very much in place, I should add, a decorum about how they discuss it, because the truth is, regardless of how you feel about which quarterback should be the starter in Cincinnati or even down the road, these guys have been pretty even through this camp. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, and I know that's not how it looked Saturday night in Jacksonville, but it's been the case. Mitch Trubisky has gotten a lot better as camp has progressed, and the only reason you didn't see hardly any of that in Jacksonville is that he was getting annihilated from all sides. And by the way, so did Pickett on his first possession. Bear in mind, that's Kenny there in the backfield getting sacked whenever Kendrick Green made that spectacular whiff on a block that's since become a social media monster meme. So Kenny's not immune to this either. And uh, look, man, I like the question. I just can't go there today. I just can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I don't care who's at quarterback. I don't care if George Pickens ends up being the next Jerry Rice. None of this matters. None of any of it matters. If this quarterback, whoever it happens to be, can't buy the time to make the offense happen. Remember last week I did a full episode on the extra amount of time that Trubisky and Pickett and Rudolph have been getting in camp. That was not some sort of praise for the offensive line. It's the way the plays are designed. Matt Canada, and rightly so, wants these plays to be a little bit more longer in the process. He wants to use the quarterback's mobility the way you saw whenever they were running for their bloody lives Saturday night. He wants to be able to say, hey, let's call a rollout here. Let's go student body left, student body right. All the stuff that I've been telling you from Latrobe. But all of it, all of it goes kablooey without an offensive line. With that line playing like that the other night or anything close to it, there's nothing to be seen here. There's no season. Because as we saw in 2021, it'll even affect the defense because the defense will be out there the whole game. And they'll wear down in the second half. And it won't matter that you've got TJ Watt and Cam Hayward and Minka Fitzpatrick. Everything is on this coaching staff in that room over at the Rooney Complex, the offensive line room, to straighten themselves out this week or to get straightened out from the outside. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. We'll do another one of these tomorrow. <laughs>